Good morning, good afternoon, and good day, everybody. David here, and it's finally here. Witch Queen has arrived, and it's brought so many ridiculous things that I didn't know what to talk about first. But leading up to Witch Queen, I was really enjoying playing Titan, and I really liked the idea of um, making a Captain America style build with the throwing shield and everything. So that's what we've done. Come up with a build, slight variations for PVE and PVP, so I'll dive into both. We'll break down the build, talk about how to use it and all that good stuff. So without further ado, let's get into it. This has just been so much fun to play, so hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as I have. So this is the build. We'll look at the PvP version first, because I, as a PvP player, that's where I feel my expertise are most set. But we'll break down the PvE version as well, and that's actually the build I've been using to do the legendary campaign and stuff with as well. So, we're obviously rocking the new Void class. The super that I'm using is the Ward of Dawn. This bubble has always been ridiculous, still fantastic in PvP. And it's even better now, because of the animation time, if you have quick enough reactions, you can actually save yourself from so many <laughs> close calls, it's ridiculous. And you'll see in this gameplay just how many times it saves my skin. Being able to proc this when a blade barrage or a nova bomb or something is launched at me at like point blank. I still managed to survive because of this. It's awesome. This whole build is built around um, just survivability, so that will be a common theme throughout. So we're using the Tower and Barricade. Again, this is just for cover and using it as a means to survive engagements. Now, this has become one of my favorite things to do, <laughs> is the shield throw. Again, I wanted to make a Captain America build, so this is sort of where it started. And the more I got to use this, the more and more I realized that this is actually very powerful. You hurl your void shield towards a target, so this replaces your normal melee. The shield can ricochet off targets and surfaces, granting overshield for each target hit. So that's the important part, it only has to hit them, and you get a tiny bit of overshield. It's not a full overshield but it's enough for you to re-peak if you're weak and then if you've got good strafe and good shots and stuff you can still win that second duel. This does 60 damage at base as well so it's like a hand cannon headshot pretty much so it's a fair chunk of damage and a very good melee if used correctly. So I'm pairing it with the spike grenades. I absolutely love these things. They were one of my favorite grenades for the hunter so now that the uh, titan can use them as well I've been loving it. This also works really well with the vortex grenade. Now that the vortex grenade can suck people in you can use it to uh, suck people from like behind cover if they're crouching with a shotgun or something. But if it's that sort of scenario, I still prefer the spike nade. Just plant it on the wall next to them. It does so much damage and it forces them to either come out of hiding, just eat the grenade or back off and then you can chase them anyway. This also pairs as a really good wombo combo with the shield throw. If they crash around a corner, you can hit them with the spike nade and then bounce the shield throw off the wall as well and the two together will kill someone like fairly quickly. So the aspects I'm using are offensive bulwark. So whilst you have an overshield or inside Ward of Dawn, your grenade charges significantly faster. So that pairs really well with both our melee that gives us a bit of overshield and our super. You also have increased melee range and damage. So again, whilst we're inside the Ward of Dawn, our melees do more damage, so then the shield throw will do more damage as well. Melee final blows extend the duration of your overshield as well. So just a lot of synergy between those two alone. So we're adding even more synergy with the Bastion aspect. Cast your super to grant overshield to nearby allies. That pairs really well with the Ward of Dawn. So they get an overshield as well as a damage boost. Casting your barricade grants overshield to yourself and nearby allies and empowers it enabling it to slowly regenerate the overshield of allies bunkering behind it and extend their overshield duration. So you can give yourself an overshield by procking your barricade. You can use the barricade to block doorways and stuff and if people walk through it they get weak whilst you've got not only full health but an overshield as well. The barricade is empowered so it takes more damage to destroy and because we've given ourselves an overshield, that procs offensive bulwarks, so then our grenades recharge faster and our melee is extended, the melee range is extended and the damage is increased. So then we can do the shield throw for even more damage and it will fly further and track better as well. So <laughs> the synergy here is just awesome. And then you take it even further with the fragments. I've been using the Echo of Persistence. 
the void buffs applied to you have increased duration, so again our overshield lasts even longer then. Melee final blow start health regen, so again we can throw our melee, start an overshield, and um, if that melee is a cleanup and gets a kill, it will then proc health regen so we can re-peak instantly with full health and a bit of an overshield as well. Damaging targets with grenades grants melee energy, so then a spike grenade, as it lasts a long time, it does loads of like tick damage, we'll be getting loads of melee energy back for each one of those ticks. And then again, getting the melee hit will give us an overshield, and then that overshield will make our grenades recharge faster. So <laughs> there's just so much synergy here, it's been absolutely awesome. So then, taking that to the next level with the Heart of Inmost Light. So this is an old exotic, but still a very very good one. Using an ability, so grenade melee or barricade, empowers the other two. Empowered means abilities have faster regen, melees and grenades do more damage, and barricades have more hit points. So again, we can prog <laughs> our barricade, which becomes empowered because of the Bastion aspect. The Bastion aspect then makes our melees do more damage, paired with offensive bulwark, because of the overshield. Then we get empowered from the Heart of Inmost Light, so our melees do even more damage and they proc a faster regen for all of our abilities. And then on top of that, we get faster um, melee back when we're doing damage with our grenade. And then faster grenade back when we've got an overshield. So <laughs> it's just everything feeds into each other. You get your abilities back so quick, it's ridiculous. I've got my stats for my discipline and my strength at around um, 50 odd seconds so well 51 seconds 56 seconds so they come back more or less at the same time anyway if both used at the same time and my barricade is only at 50 but because of the heart of inmost light um, I get that back so quick and again everything just feeds into each other so you're getting your abilities back constantly on top of that to keep the uh, survivability going we've got crimson so then Getting a kill with Crimson will give us health regen, and give us our health back straight away. Just pairing that with a shotgun, I actually just got this to drop yesterday, so I've been trying it out. Very good shotgun so far, so I've been enjoying that. Now, some important mods. Because Masterwork weapons don't make orbs anymore, we're rocking the Kinetic Siphon. So rapid Kinetic Weapon Final Blows create an orb of power. And then we're using Hand Cannon Targeting from the Artifact to be able to give us some um, that because otherwise it will cost five. Crimson is very easy to get double kills with because of the health regen and if you're getting a precision kill as well and um, it automatically refills the magazine so you don't need to reload. So chaining kills with it is very easy so therefore you get the um, charge with light or make that orb like really easy as well. We're also using grenade kickstarts and then when we throw our grenade we automatically get like a third of our energy back and then obviously the grenade Fall down will um, happen faster when we have a overshield or when we use our Heart of Inmost light buff as well. We've got taken charge, so when we pick up that orb that we make with Crimson, we become charged with light. And then also quick charge, so we become charged with light by rapidly defeating multiple combatants with our shotgun, which again is very easy to do if uh, if you're getting pushed. I've had situations where I've managed to um, throw my shield, get that little bit of um, overshield. Then uh, clean up the first guy with the shotgun because he's already taken 60 damage. Then when the next guy is pushed in, I've survived his shotgun shot because of the overshield. And then I've managed to get the uh, second guy as well. And then get charged with light. Very, very good. Synergizes well with this build. Then we're using the utility kickstart. So this will also help us get our class ability back whenever we use our class ability. So I've doubled down on that. And then obviously high energy fire so we can spend that charge of light that we get. That's the PvP build done. Absolutely filthy. <laughs> so now I'll break down some plays and stuff and talk about how to sort of use this whole kit and how to make it work. And then we'll break down how I've been using it in PvE as well. So let's talk about the bubble first. So the Ward of Dawn is now its own super so you can no longer choose between popping the bubble and popping a sentinel shield. This is both a good and bad thing. I personally enjoyed having the choice between the two. You could choose whether you wanted a roaming super or to lock down an area in a certain situation. 
but the plus side is now that it's its own thing and it's classed as a support super it comes back along with Well of Radiance as the fastest super in the game so that means more often than not you're going to get your super first in a match which um, with, especially with the bubble can be completely game changing as I said earlier the main difference now is how quick the animation is so you can see in this gameplay here where fusion that the hunter fires I tank it and pop the um, bubble and just completely just lock down that area of course I do try and go for the sword multi kill which doesn't work for me <laughs> and I end up paying the price but I could have just stayed in that bubble and just said no and just kept that area locked down and then again in you can see in this clip it works for uh, I push up to the B flag on fragment and I pop my uh, bubble as soon as the blade barrage is cast it means that I can survive that and also just lock down B area the sentinel titan particularly with bubble has always been about locking down an area and that carries on through the neutral game now with the sentinel titan overall but particularly this build now let's move on to the rest of the kit. Again, you can use any weapons you want. I really liked Crimson with this build because of the health regen you get. Crimson is just absolutely filthy, particularly on console. Very easy to use, very generous with its range and stuff, so just a very good option. So, because of the Bastion aspect, when you pop your shield, you gain a overshield while you're behind it as well. That overshield does not go away when you leave the shield, which is ridiculous, so you're not trapped there. You can leave it and then roam the map now with a void over shield again that shield will also proc our um, heart of inmost light as well as our bulwark aspect which increases our melee damage and gives us faster um, grenade recharge whilst we have an over shield so as soon as you pop that shield you have two buffs that get your melee damage improved and two buffs that get your um, ability energy back just stacking the overshield and the health regen is instant as well so you can see here there's times where I pop it whilst I'm weak and it absolutely saves me because I just instantly get all my health back plus an overshield and so I can then push out to the next guy. Again this pairs really well with Crimson then because you can chain kills to keep getting your health regen after that point as well. Much like the bubble the shield should be used to lock down an area. So you can use it to block doorways, use it to block like main lanes where people are going to be trying to run through. Just them seeing that is going to make them hesitate and stop pushing. So that means you then control that area. As well as being able to use it as cover to peak shot and stuff with extra health. Now how it synergizes with the rest of the kit really well is that you can use it to instantly get your health back. Push in with a shotgun or your primary or whatever to weaken the next guy and then throw your um, sentinel shield for the cleanup because the cast of the shield is instant you can then get that kill and get health regen and an overshield which is just ridiculous the shield throw is just so good for this class I absolutely love it I love the fact that it's um, instant cast and it moves fairly quickly and fairly generous with um, seeking of its targets so you can see here when I'm trapped behind this box I jump up, throw the shield, bounces off the wall, and it gives me health regen <laughs> and my overshield, plus making the guy weak for then an easy clean up with the portal when I re peek. And people just don't expect it, especially this early in the season. And again, here, I win this duel just super weak, cast my shield to instantly get my health back and then overshield. Duel that guy, get him weak, he darts for cover. I bounce the shield off the wall for the cleanup and then I can claim heavy. <laughs> it's just so good, so much synergy here. And then I just get an awesome triple kill with the uh, the sword afterwards. <laughs> Again, everything in this class just feeds into each other. Here I spawn in front of an arc strider. Then with the use of the shield it gives me an over shield and weakens him. Actually, as a side note, whilst editing this video, I realised that if you have a weapon with trench barrel on, so I have a shotgun with it on. Trench Barrel states that you gain increased damage and handling for getting a melee hit. So you could throw the shield, gain an overshield, damage them slightly, and gain more handling and damage on your shotgun, but then an easy cleanup after that. 
so I'm definitely going to try that out next and I recommend you guys try it out as well. Now this is a perfect example of everything feeding into each other. I proc the shield to lock down the cave area. As two people are pushing in on my right, I can throw a spike nade off the wall, trap him one in that corner and he just eats the grenade and dies because he has nowhere to go. The next guy pushes in, I hit him with the sentinel shield that damages him and makes him dart for cover. Also gives me health so I can take less damage from that melee that he threw and now I can just clean him up with a shotgun and then again I get my grenade back because of all of the abilities we've been using and because of Heart of the Most Light. So then that stops the next guy pushing me and I can just survive. Same thing here, use the shield to claim heavy. Now I've got an overshield plus heavy, I can push up and I don't lose the overshield for leaving the shield. Throw a spike nade off the wall to get the guy that's up there on the corner. <laughs> These spike nades are so good for that. Then as I push around to try and help a uh, teammate. He pushes in, gets absolutely wrecked, but I weaken the guy with the shield throw and then it's an easy cleanup with the shotgun. And again, that gave me an overshield, so then I would have been able to uh, tank more of his shotgun shots as well. And then as I push out to heavy again, because of my slight overshield I've got, even though he's got a faster time to kill weapon, I actually win that duel because of that health bump that I had. And then can instantly proc the barrier to heal myself and get an overshield again. Like, there's just so much synergy here. It's just so, so good for just denying areas. Again, push into cave here. Own a couple of jewels, managed to get a kill with Crimson to get my health back. Those double nades messed me up, so then I prunk my barrier to get my health back. Kill the guy that pushes in with heavy. Shotgun guy's caught in the corner weak, so then I <laughs> cast my shield around the corner for the cleanup. Spike off the wall to get the guy that's in the corner. And then I'll get confident and sort of over push, but manage to get one more kill before I go down. <laughs> it just embodies everything about the Titan. Just being able to be an absolute tank and just saying no to anyone pushing up into your area. So for PvE, uh, most of the build is pretty much the same, but there's a few alterations, so I'll just talk through those. So we're actually using the Vortex Grenade in PvE. This is fantastic for uh, just getting groups of adds into one area because it just sucks them all in and then you can actually throw your shield at those big groups of adds once they've all like been sucked into the same area so again just a bit of a wombo combo between them the exact same aspect so it works in the same way just abilities feeding into each other and then we use the echo of undermining so our void grenades apply weaken as well so they do even more damage by making the enemies take more damage. And then the other two are leeching and provision. Getting more energy back for our melee by getting there, just damage with the grenades. And then health regen when we get a melee final blow. The stats have dropped a little bit because of the um, fragment we're using, but we've got our resilience up a little bit. Again, we're using the Heart of Inmost Light to sort of counteract that and get our grenades and just our abilities back as much as possible. Then I'm using a Wastelander with 1-2 punch, so hitting an enemy with every pellet increases our melee damage, so then our melee will do more damage and this pairs really well again with the powerment buff that we get from the Heart of Inmost Light and the melee buff we get from um, Offensive Bulwark. So our melees then do even more damage. Then we're using the Glaive. This is um, great for the shield, so again, just more survivability. We can use this to um, block as we're like closing the gap to then use our shotgun to um, then proc 1-2 punch and go from there. Then it's got great range, because I've specced into um, just high range with kill clip. And blocking damage with this enhanced trait makes it so uh, our movement speed is even higher. So then we can close the gap faster and stuff like that. I've been enjoying this glaive a lot, sort of covers loads of different bases. And Psycho Hack is an incredible perk. Sustained damage from this weapon lowers the target's damage output for a short duration. So again, we've got super high range and kill clip, so we can just keep doing high chunks of damage from range. And it decreases the amount of damage our enemies can do to us because of this perk. Uh, you can use any heavy you want, but I've been using this because 
Chill Clip is awesome. Direct hits with the top half of this magazine cause this detonation that slows nearby enemies. Enough of these hits, I think it's like four of these, and will actually freeze the target as well. And then we've also got Unrelenting, so then multiple kills will trigger health regen. So again, just more survivability. There are a couple of important mods. Again, we've got the Kinetic uh, Siphon. Multiple kills with our shotgun will make it all the like for us. And then hands on, so we get more super energy for shield throw kills. Again, the same uh, grenade kickstart, but we've also got melee well maker. This is from the artifact. Powered melee kills spawn elemental wells that match your subclass type, so void wells. And this pairs really well with another mod from the artifact, this font of might. Picking up that elemental well will then grant us a temporary bonus to weapon damage. Affects void weapons, so this then makes our glaive do even more damage, and this will stack with kill clip. We're also rocking absolution, so when we pick up a orb, we get all of our abilities cooldown faster. And then the high energy fire with the taken charge combo still. So again, just so much synergy <laughs> again, like weapon damage buffs left, right, and center, and getting then all of our abilities back super quick. Like you just can't die when you're using this. <laughs> So like I did with the PvP build, I'll show you a few clips with this in PvE and how I've been using it to just survive everything. <laughs> so much like the PvP build, your abilities just feed into each other really well. So here you can see I drop my shield to get uh, my grenade and stuff back faster. I then push the boss, I weaken him with the grenade and stun him with that shield as well. Lay into him with my sword for a bit. Pop my bubble. This sword also has um, unrelenting and chain reaction on it, so get my health back on those add kills. And then when I'm weak here, proc my shield again to get another overshield. And then um, all these ability kills are just feeding into my abilities. I believe the recharge rate is a lot faster in PvE than it is in PvP. And then once I clock the boss has actually moved into my shield, I decide to just push him. Weaken them with the grenade as well. <laughs> it's just so good. You get your abilities back so quick. At the beginning of this clip, I'm actually just running around, just like trying to avoid everything, <laughs> waiting until I get a ability back so I can start that chain up. And then here, I get my shield just in time. I'll get that kill, get health regen and an overshield. That allows me to then get my barrier up because of Heart of Inmost Light. I proc that to get the overshield, which then is now giving me my um, grenade back. So I weaken a bunch of people with my grenade whilst in my bubble, and then just lay into them with the glaive and my melees whilst I'm in there, because I get that improved damage as well. So again, there's just so much that feeds into each other. Like, <laughs> the abilities come back so quick in PvE that it can make a massive difference on them, um, just the uptime of the abilities and just how much overshield you can get and how much uh, damage you can do with the weakening grenades and everything. It's just awesome. But that will do it for the video guys. Thank you so much for watching. I know it's been another long one, but I really wanted to break this down. Absolutely loving this build. So hopefully you'll enjoy it too. As a slight side note, Sentinel Shield is also fantastic, so feel free to check that out, as well as Ward of Dawn. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video, hopefully you've learned something. If you have, a like and the subscription is very much appreciated. If you click the notification bell, you will also be notified whenever I upload more Witch Queen videos. I'll be breaking down things from different builds for each character, as well as some um, crazy weapons and some new perks available and also how the weapon crafting system and everything works. So keep your eye out for those videos coming up. Until next time, my friends, stay safe, keep up the grind, and I shall catch you all very soon indeed. Bye, so bye. Two for one, triple down.